Whether you're new to this channel or you're a veteran, you probably don't recognize this tank. It's been a very long time since I've done an update on the 40 gallon and there has been so much change. I mean, so much change. Last time I showed you guys this thing, it was ridden with bubble algae, numerous types of algae, in fact, and Aptasia. I mean, lots of Aptasia, and I don't mean that lightly. There's still a little bit of bubble algae here and there. Okay, maybe more than a little bit of bubble algae, not gonna lie, but I do have good news, okay? I don't want to jinx myself or anything, but I'm really proud to announce that that Aptasia infestation, well, it's, it's been taken care of. Yeah, it's been taken care of. To get rid of the absolute nemesis of a creature, I used Aptasia X and super glue suffocation and a lot of tears. But we finally did it, y'all! We finally did it, and it's one of my proudest accomplishments. But a little over a month or so ago, I had a pretty terrible Alk swing. I'm talking four. 4.7, y'all. 4. freaking 7. Okay, now before you go take your pitchforks out in the comment section, I can explain. I rely on Sunday water changes to boost up my parameters. At least I used to two months ago. So I went out of town for two weekends in a row and like a total dumb I am, I didn't register that two weeks not doing a water change is a terrible decision. Obviously, right? And despite all odds, I mean literally all of the odds, nothing died. I know. You know, water changes became like this robotic action, you know, so I didn't consider just how dire, you know, missing them would be. We just essentially have an angry Aquaman Monty. But honestly, this Monty needed to slow down for a bit anyway. I mean, look how much this thing has grown. Like, not cool. Not cool at all. You know, I went through this whole encrusting phase like a while back where, you know, all I saw was chalices, favias, and Montys. And this phase just lasted way too long, guys. Don't ever put encrusting stuff on your aquascape, okay? Isolate that thing on its own rock or its own frag plate like it deserves. I also moved the firework clove mound. In the previous video, it was very tame and in control. And well, this is what it grew to. Yeah, on the glass, on the actual glass. I've come to realize that firework cloves are just the easier to remove anthelia. And I think by now we all understand how much I dislike anthelia. So that statement says a lot you know? And plus, a coral that is invasive enough to grow on the glass belongs in the graveyard of the tank automatically, you know? Where it can live its best life, you know, away from things that matter. And you know what? You know what? They actually made the graveyard look really pretty. And this one you'll find pretty exciting. I finally added sand. I finally added sand. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Finally added some sand. You know, I've never actually added new sand to an existing tank build. And I don't know why, but I worked it up to be such a big deal in my head. But you know, after removing the easier to remove Anthelia firework clove mound, I had this moment of enlightenment. Cause you know, we've only been staring at egg crate for a solid year and egg crate, by the way, Way, it's a terrible decision if you didn't already know. I don't even know where I managed to actually get the idea to put egg crate on the bottom of my tank. I think it was something about securing the rock, but even that doesn't really make any sense. It's just wrong on so many levels. You know, if you take anything educational away from my YouTube channel, take this. Don't use egg crate on the bottom of your reef tank, okay? And in other news, I found out that I have an entire population of bristle worms in the hammer garden. You know, no big deal or anything. But y'all, you you have no idea. So my Rasta hammer was closing up right, you know, and I went into instant panic mode. You know, if the hammer is doing poorly, then the acros have absolutely no hope. But it was only parts of the hammer, you know? So I took a look and guys, guys, the sheer amount of vermited snails, I never could have imagined. There was more vermited snails than hammer. And then I saw this and like for real, the entire hammer, okay, essentially became a bristle worm penthouse. I took some bone cutters and went in for that manual removal, you know, and super glued that massive penthouse hole shut. Not really a permanent solution though, was concerned about preventing new head growth. So best that I could do. But fun fact, fun fact, bumblebee snails take care of these things. So planning on adding some to the tank ASAP. Plus they're really pretty.
The corals have really blossomed though. I mean, remember this Fabia? Well, look at this Fabia now. Remember the Plating Monty? The Plating Monty now. You, you remember the Walt Disney? Yeah? Well, look at the Walt Disney now, huh? Oh yeah. The growth on the acros honestly makes me so proud though. One year later and they're blossoming into little colonies. I am swooning. I mean, look how small they used to be. You know that before and after? Are you serious? What a difference a year can make. I mean, dang. Also finally got around to placing the corals on the two, you know, near full frag racks. I didn't do it for so long because I was honestly, I was a bit upset with the status of the tank. You know, with all the pests and that egg crate, you know, I, I have some serious avoidance issues as it is. But you know, once that sand got on there, I was like, oh baby, I am ready. Had a lot of new acros to place, but the highest point in my aquascape is just this flat old ledge. And you know what happens when you place a bunch of acros on the same old flat ledge, lack of dimension, one dimensional boringness. They're sexy acros, you know, it would be a total disservice to them. So I thought, hey, I can add little rock pieces so they're standing at different heights. Obvious, I know, but at this time it was, it was revolutionary. Now I was on a roll. Went to the arch with the next acros. End of arch, not close enough to flow in light. What do? Oh, ho, ho, ho. rubble, obviously. Made sexy rubble rock flow feature. Added sexy SPS. Arc now elevated to A1 high class arc. Digi's love not enough flow and light. Place those on the end of the arc. Bam, problem solved. The gonies, they need more flow. Place them here where they have more flow. The anacropora that never encrusts on a rock. Split those frags up. Add them as filler corals throughout the tank. Broke a part of the arc Digi in the process? No worries. Stop that Aquaman Monty from gaining more power. I mean, Digi's grow in weird ways, right? Like I said, tons of changes here. Tons of improvement, tons of progress. And guys, I can honestly say that after three whole years, three years of stress and even a tank crash, this reef tank is finally finally bringing me joy. I actually stare at my tank now all of the time. I'm even cleaning the glass every day. I mean, y'all, someone help me. There's honestly no better feeling than seeing a tank to pretty much completion, except getting rid of Aptasia. Getting rid of Aptasia is definitely the number one best feeling.